Amen. The truth will set us free on application. Amen. 18th today of the 9th, 2013. Going to be going into Corinthians in a minute. But as a prelude, I want to make mention once again on the uh, Pope Francis um, and the atheist, the article we've done and we've been talking about it, how the atheists can uh, uh, enter in, enter into heaven and uh, uh, by listening to their conscience, a seared conscience of that, we know that's not possible. I just wanted to read a couple of scriptures, that's all, um, to confirm that. Uh, John 15, can we go there first? John 15 and the verses uh, 5. That's the first scripture I want to use there. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, without me, you can do nothing. Without me. So uh, it's got to be more than a conscience, hey? God has to be in, Jesus has to be in the equation. It's not just some conscious conscience thing that's mocking the cross again roman catholic system is very good experts at mocking the work of christ at the cross we know that we know they have uh, all kinds of um memorabilia they have all kinds of uh, uh, objects and crosses with with this supposed jesus still on them we know that they have a priesthood which tells us very clearly that the veil in the temple was not torn according to them and the holy of holies open to anyone and everyone that would uh, repent and desire to repent have a heart to repent matthew 3 is our last scripture in reference to the pope atheists um, and their seared consciences. Matthew 3, we'll go there, verse 7. Matthew 3, verse 7. When he saw many, when John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of snakes, vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Verse 8, Matthew 3, Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. Verse 9, And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham to Abraham from these stones. Amen? Isn't that awesome? What the Lord has done? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So in Matthew, in Matthew chapter three, we have a verse there. Um, Matthew three, verse eight. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Hey, we have to bear fruit. It's got nothing to do with just the conscience on its own hey we, we can't save ourselves we must bear fruit worthy of god allowing us and permitting us to even repent are you with me today hey so as far as pope francis saying that atheists can come another way and that they're acceptable in the kingdom not as they are not as they are all sinners are accepted by christ on true repentance we must bear fruit worthy there's no good thing in us until we come to that place 
where we bear fruit worthy of repentance and then bearing fruit befitting the repentance. All have sinned. None of us are any good for anything. We can do nothing without him. So what I want to say is even the beginning of the beginning was permitted by Christ. Even the beginning of the beginning of our salvation was initiated by Christ. Not by conscience, not by self. Amen? So let's go into the message today. The beginning of the beginning. Bearing fruit. John the Baptist said, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Amen. Hey, that is the beginning of the beginning. <laughs> that God, in other words, that God looks down and sees that us in, in our darkness and sin, we're ready to turn. Definitely. Genuinely. Surely. We're ready. Our, he looks at our heart. Hey? Not some show. And he sees that we're ready. And then he allows us to repent. He allows us. And then when we repent, then we must bear fruit worthy. Hey? We must bear fruit befitting what we said we've done. Befitting that heart condition. Which is good fruit, isn't it? And ongoing and progressing. So today we're going to look at Paul's writing to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's start in verse 8. Let's start in verse 8. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see it in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know as I am, I also am known. Final verses 13, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now by the faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And Paul was a humble man, wasn't he? Yes, Paul was humble. He is a godly man and a pure man. He was a man after God's heart. He was a man that ran the race, fought the fight, kept the fight. Hey? And even he said, we know in part. Hey? We know in part. But then we shall know just as we are known. That's in the immortal realm. Today, our message is going to be on faith, hope and love. And verse 13 is our verse. And now abide, now abide faith, hope and love. These three, the greatest of these is love. Of course it is. That's where... All the good and perfect things come from in our lives. From that platform and that foundation, that starting block of love. God is love, yeah? And now, by now, we're not waiting for this to be assembled. We're not, we're not waiting for this. It, it is. This space, this, uh, th these realms, they live. Abide means live. They live. And now we have this place 
faith, hope and love. When Jesus died on the cross, the door was open. The door was open for us to for us to abide in that which is abiding. Hey? Faith, hope and love, well, these are not books. As Christendom, the churches of the world, the one world church and the harlot church and the prostituting churches that follow on after her say. They have, if you go to the Christian bookstore, you have all these things, all these books about faith, hope and love. But th these things are spiritual. Hey? These things are spiritual. These abide, but do we abide in them? Look, you can read faith books and hope books and you can read love books, you know what I mean? You can learn how to play the love game, as John Paul Young says, you know, and never know love. You can sing about love like the Beatles and say all you need is love. Well, he was right there. He was right there. And um, the bottom line is, the bottom line is that we have today, hallelujah, that opportunity. We have that opportunity to... Abide, hey, okay? to abide in this love that Christ has provided through his death, burial and resurrection. Look, we, we can go down to these Christian bookstores and we can buy a book on love and read about it and then there's someone in need and we just walk past, you know what I mean? Or we can be doing things... And the pastor says, look, I don't, I, I don't want you to do that. You know, it could be simple things like turn your phone off and we can just ignore that and, and just let that phone ring, ring, ring and interrupt everything. That's not respect and that's not love. That's the devil. That's, that's the devil in that person trying to uh, uh, interrupt what the Spirit of God is saying. And they're not doing it to the minister with their mobile phone. I look, most people, it's their god. It's their it's their lifeline. Not Jesus. It, their their mobile phone. It's that stinking human reliance. Hey, okay? goes back to the Adamic family. Of Adam and Eve, and they rely on it. You know, they rely on humans, rotten, stinking counsel, rather than Christ. They lack faith. They lack hope. They lack the love of God. The greatest is love. You, everything starts there. Everything starts with love. Don't give me this. Garbage, I'm going to Bible college to learn knowledge of men. Don't, look, put it in the bin. Hogwash. We have to love Jesus first, foremost, more than our wife, children, culture, traditions, mother, father, more than our mobile phones, more than the person talking on that mobile phone. Listen to me. Jesus does not talk on mobile phones. Jesus talks by the Holy Ghost. 
Jesus ministers to us by the still small voice of the Lord. Or he, he, may, he may use a, 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 an instrument to send you a scripture or, or use an instrument to, to say something to you, but that is coming from the Spirit. When, when we're hearing the Word of God, one of the greatest blessings I've ever had is when the Lord ministered to me and said, when you hear the Word being spoken or you're reading the Word or um, you're contemplating the Word, clear the whole way, clear the room, shut it all down. And give that quality time to me, says the Lord. Then you're going to grab something. Until then, with all the interruptions and the carry on, hey, 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 hey. Hey. No, it's not going to work. You're going to miss the blessing. As people miss the blessing <coughs> of the new covenant, which says, love him first. And then they're wondering why they've got 600 books on faith, 300 books on love, 293 uh, discs on hope. And they got still don't have faith, hope or love operating in their life. They're not abiding there. They're abiding at the Christian bookstore buying the books to read about, about, about. They don't live there in faith, in Hope and in love with Jesus, can someone say? Right? These are by. There's a burger shop down the road and you tell the person, listen, I know you love burgers, you know, and I can tell you love burgers just by the look of you. I know you love burgers. I know where there's a place just down the road near your place. It's a stone's throw away. The burgers are superb. The meat is grain fed. You know, it, it, it's waggy beef on these burgers. The tomatoes, that they're cherry red and, and, and they're, 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 they're vine ripened. You know, the, the lettuce is actually green, not white. You know what I mean? The onions just came out of the ground, hallelujah. <laughs> and the mayonnaise is homemade, not from the bottle. <laughs> the bread just came from the bakery and yes it is whole grain maybe bordering on multi-grain and so the eggs are, are, are from the freelance farm you know what I mean not the cage bird now, after you've been, and the price, oh, unbelievable, you, half the price of that mongrel breed burger shop down the road with all that rotten meat that was left over from somewhere, I don't know, and the, with the white lettuce and the white tomatoes. Yeah? Just far greater with the rotten eggs on it and the stale bread. But yet, people, people, they don't go there. Right? They just want to keep hearing about it, you know. Oh, man, you know, you told me about that last time. Well, did you go there? No. <laughs> oh. we, we just sort of want to hear about Jesus. You know what I mean? We want to hear about the attributes of God. We, we want to hear about, wow, you know, did you hear about this miracle and how this happened? And unbelievable. You know, God's word is real sort of thing. You know, it, I was reading about giving, you know, and it says give and, and it will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. But if you make a big noise about it, you've already received your consolation. Wow. You know, God will give back to you far more than you ever give. Really? Yeah. But still, the minister still has, you know, give your donation and in brackets, tax deductible, and the minister points the congregation to Caesar to go and get their money back. 
In other words, they never gave in love. They never gave by faith. They got no hope of being blessed by God. Can someone say amen? Hey? They're not doing things according to the principles of the Christ. Are they? No. They don't even believe God. They've got more trust in Caesar in the taxation department. But yet, these abide. They're there. These, they, these are living realms. These are not books. These are not discs. The faith, hope and love, the, these heavenly spaces we can live in. You know, we can walk in this stone. Right? And we can experience the zenith of God. We can, we, we can experience the presence of God in our lives. Someone say amen. amen. Right? And when we keep that new covenant, this is with the overflow and the outworking. When we obey, when we fulfill the new covenant, love the Lord Jesus with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. Faith, hope and love arise in our lives. It cannot be any other way. It cannot be any other way. When we love Jesus first and foremost, love, faith, hope will arise and then we will not be bogged down with trying to lay hold of these great, enormous heavenly blessings by <laughs> we, we, we cannot do this by man alone hallelujah hey? we, we, we cannot do this by ourselves The people of the world think they have faith and hope and, and love, but that amounts to nothing. Unless Christ is in the equation, it amounts to nothing. And now by faith, hope, love, the greatest of these is love. Living in obedience to the victor of Emmanuel because that's where everything comes from. That's where everything that's of any weight comes from. The love of God. God himself. God so loved the world. That's how great. Paul's talking about how great love is. That he gave his son for unrighteous people. Slaughtered his son for unrighteous people. For us. That's how great it is. How great is love? Well, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, or better still, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he said... <clears throat> Earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. You can desire things, and you can desire gifts, but I'm going to show you a more excellent way. Love is an excellent way. Excellent. It's the way of God. Love, 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 love. Putting yourself last, putting yourself somewhere in the background there, dying on a more excellent way. The most excellent way. Living in obedience to the victor Emmanuel. Look, we prepare for this. We, we handle our walk with Christ with kid gloves. We handle 
our walk with Christ as great treasure. Not trashy. Oh yeah, I do a bit of that, you know. But that's really not my life. I do go to a meeting now and then, you know. And I do, you know, like it's, a, it's like Jesus is there in the background sort of thing, filling in the gaps. There's no, not this great preparation and everything stops for the king. You know, like when the king's coming down the road, you know. Everyone sees the, you know, that ungodly Queen Elizabeth coming to town. Well, look, people have been sacked from their job because they, they, they forgot to ring up and said they weren't coming in to work and they were going to see the Queen. Just to stand on the side of the road and just to see her pass by about 20 foot away and waving her hand, you know, with that fishtail wave. That rudder, that little rudder wave, controlling, the rudder controls all things, doesn't it? Like the tongue. But, you know what I mean? They, people really go out of their way. Uh, ACDC's coming to town. You've got to have a holiday. And people go out of their way. But when Jesus, the King of Kings, when he, look, what he says is, they abide, faith, hope and love. When we walk in, 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 by faith and, and, and live in hope, he is our hope. Our faith is in him. Our hope is in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. And when this is so, and when we love him first, we're going to walk by faith. We're going to have hope that does not disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our abroad we're covered in it abroad wall to wall we're talking here carpets amen love carpets so we're so blessed you know when when we put Jesus first. Because when people make the snide remarks and they come against us and, and, and they, they exclude us or mock us, they um, ignore us, or when we're talking, you know, they're not really listening to us. Those are very offensive things, you know, to humans, human beings. But when we put Jesus first, The love of God just oozes out of us. You know what? When people do that, we just hear one word. It's bud time. <laughs> it's bud time. Not bud wiser. But the wise know it's bud time. When I was in Hawaii with the Australian Army, I used to drink bud wiser. You know? I wasn't very wise. We go down and get a bud, you know. Down Waikiki. We go down and have a few bird, a few. I'm here to stump. No. Military police used to bring me back <laughs> to the barracks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go again. Just when I was about to get myself together. When the drama comes, when people are ignorant and arrogant, mockers, liars, intimidating we say straight away by the wisdom of god it's bud time it's time to let the fruit of the spirit bud it's time for hey the, the fruit of the spirit in me is going to grow here Hallelujah. so we just zip it don't we we just zip it we could lash out with the tongue you know we could break loose with the fist or a, a star picket or something, <laughs> machete, GPMG, 100 round belt. We could break loose. 
and it might be quite quite dazzling at the moment at that time but the repercussions will be devastating so now abide love hope and faith faith hope and love and they will be ours to walk in when jesus when we live in obedience to the victor emmanuel when jesus is number one that's what this message is about faith hope and love is about jesus being number one they abide are we abiding in them hey are we abiding in them we might think that no there's another way but there is no other way to lay hold of the fruits of the spirit i know people that they know jesus look the fruit of the spirit is not there but they've known jesus for years and years and years because they've never put jesus first they've never allowed that they they've come to christ but never kept the covenant hey they've come to christ and they've never gone on with him and the fruit's not there they get violent with you they get angry they curse and swear look you know it's just not the fruit of the spirit control over the tongue self control through the spirit perseverance long suffering through the spirit we need to put jesus first for these to operate otherwise we, we go the other way and just keep keep on um, buying the books on phone t-shirts on phone we have the t-shirt with god is love on it that's all you'll ever have the love one be then you'll still be number one hey you'll be still buying wagyu beef for yourself and sausages for your neighbor outdated ones and then hello that will still be it okay <laughs> that will still be the case we'll always be unhappy we'll always be discontent we'll always be defeated we'll always be living in the past we'll always be full of jealousy we'll always be full of resentment we'll always be full of unforgiveness we'll always be full of vengeance and hatred and wondering why we can't escape sin it's because we haven't kept that new covenant most church goers today and church leaders they seem to think that this new covenant is, is, is obsolete they don't really bother about it but everything hangs on that everything is hanging on that living in obedience to the victor emmanuel everything all good things and all all perfect things come from above from the heavenly father of lights in whom there's no change of variation can someone say amen amen hey amen. we're not waiting for this to be assembled this is already done it's it's placed there it's there for the pickings it's there for us to lay hold of what he laid hold of for us he already had it but he laid hold of it for us at the cross he laid hold of faith hope and love for us at the cross and then when he died on the cross and rose from the dead and and, and sorted it all out and accomplished all things and said it's finished it's finished now you lay hold of it activate it faith hope and love don't keep buying the book activate it hallelujah stand in fear and awe and reverence of the lord 
And when my I have a mobile phone, it's very simple one. I, I don't really like mobile phones, but it's my son's. <laughs> he gave it to me when he was 13. <laughs> but that's, I, I'm content with that. But just to make sure I don't offend the Holy Ghost. While I'm ministering, I pull the battery out. It ain't going to ring then, is it? Someone say amen. It's not going to ring. Just, just so that I'll have everything done for the congregation on a Sunday or a Wednesday. <laughs> I come hours early. I love it. I dream about coming here on Wednesday and Sunday. I can't wait to get here and clean the dunny. And scrub. I can't wait. I live all week to do that. For the congregation. To make everything as nice and in place. So no one might trip over on the way in. Or have I left anything behind? I spend all Saturday thinking. <laughs> That's how I spend my Sabbath, doing good for someone. Like the congregation, making sure everything's there. That Jesus is number one. That Jesus gets the priority and the cream of my life. It's not just the last minute flash in the pan. Oh, I just remembered. I got a meeting to hold. Yeah. It's there. Faith, hope and love. Look, we can walk in this. We don't have to stop we stop spending your money on books reading about it. Stop reading about going to France and going there. It's just not the same. When you go there you never want to go to France again. Hey? Right? Stop reading about going to England. When you go there, you never want to go there again. The rooms are so small, you can't swing a cat in there. You can only have a shower once a year or something, whatever. Anyway, when we keep that new covenant, and Christ knows this, he designed it this way. When we keep the new, keep the new covenant, Jesus is number one. His love becomes tangible like never before. His love becomes heightened, obvious. And then we start behaving. You know, when someone's really loved, you know, they know they're loved. They got hope, they got faith. They're not walking around harassing people bad-mouthing people. They're not walking around robbing people, killing people, lying to people, directing the congregation to the taxation department. You give a donation, it's tax deductible. Destroying and undermining the faith. Those people never learn to walk by faith. They never learn to trust in God. They give donations, oh, it's tax deductible. And they get their consolation and God can't bless them because they've already got their blessing. There's no double dipping. You can't double dip. You can't keep all your money here on earth and have it in heaven too. You can't store all your treasures in front of you and then have them in heaven too. Someone say amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now by the faith, hope and love, our faith should be in him. He should be our number one love. 
not the things of the world, not this life, not our life. Count not my life dear to me, Paul said. I know what they're going to do when I get there. They're waiting for me. They're going to torture me. Chains, trouble are waiting for me, but I'm still going. I'm not trying to ring up and find someone to find an excuse why I can't go. But it's just too hard to go there. It's just too inconvenient for me. It just cuts across my cultural grain. Hey? The more excellent way. Daniel had that more excellent way. He was of an excellent spirit, Daniel. He said, look, I, 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 I could eat this food. I could go the Wagyu beef way. I, I could betray my Lord. I could... But no, I'll just stick with the veg. And when the king looked and seen the countenance of Daniel, he said, wow, he's looking good. Go, you good thing. Because he put Yahweh first, didn't he? We, we just can't seem to get it today. That is the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Didn't he? That is the way. I am the way. And when we put Jesus first, it's going to cut across the flesh, isn't it? It's going to cut across the flesh. It's going to crucify the flesh. It's bud time. Hallelujah. The wise man knows... When you cut across the flesh and the degenerated mind, it's bud time. It's time for the fruit of the Spirit to start budding and growing. Yeah? Blessed are you when you're treated badly. Why? Because it's bud time. The love thing is going to happen. It's going to come oozing out of you. You know, I, 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 I bud and, and, and grow in the fruit of the Spirit daily because so many people, they've got their snide remarks and their, their mockery and intimidation. And a man yesterday... He's trying to intimidate me and mock me. And I just butted up, you know. <laughs> I just looked over at him and I just looked at him. <laughs> and I just, said, <laughs> I just looked at him and I just pointed at him, you know. And gave him that. God bless you. <laughs> and I just burst forward and budded in the love realm again. You know? My patience was just blossoming. My long suffering was blossoming. My perseverance was blossoming. And that's Christ manifesting, isn't it? It's no longer I that liveth. Hey? These two golden rules that any fool can take away and use. Two golden rules. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. Love you, then love your neighbour. You're not in the picture yet. <laughs> What about me? It isn't fair. I've had enough. Now I'm breaking loose. Can't you see? I want to kill. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just take more than you need. Hey, I take more shit, too. <laughs> Hi.
And one guy walked by me and he had something to eat in his hand. He said, here, you want to buy it? I said, no, I don't want to buy it. I want the lot. <laughs> Just to sort of get his attention, you know. And I wanted him to come over closer, you know, draw nigh. So that I could have the opportunity to say, have a look at what he was eating and say, better still, you give me that and I'll buy you two. But it didn't happen. <laughs> Next. Now by the faith, hope and love that these are not just books or discs, right? Hey? So when the issue, when the big issues come, even the magazine, you can bud, you know. When the big issues come in life. I mean, when the big issues come, a lot of people handle things in multiple ways, don't they? But we've only got one way to go. We only have one way to go. But the world, the ungodly are not so. The one world church is not so. They take all kinds of measures. But we have a way set before us all captured under those two golden rules that any fool can take away and use. Hey? Biggest fool in town can abide by those two golden rules and be an awesome man. If you love Jesus, first and foremost, up to the light you have, with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. You're not in the picture yet. You will prosper in your realm and have great success. And you will be a victorious person. Just by abiding by two golden rules. Divine rules, heavenly rules. You don't have to buy the Queen Bee and Library. You don't have to buy all the books in the world and go to university to be great or to be content or to be happy or to be uh, a man of faith, a man of hope. And a loving being. You don't need to do anything. You just need to walk by those two golden rules. That any fool can take away and use. Hey? The greatest of these is love. Paul was saying the greatest thing you can ever do is heed and hearken to the new covenant. Because everything hangs in the balance on these two. The law and the prophets hang in the balance of these two. Scripture confirms scripture. These are the sons of God who are led by the spirit of the Christ. We walk by the law of the Spirit of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we arrange everything. Every single thing. We bring it all to a crash halt. Boom. Now we're starting afresh as of today. Thus far, devil. Thus far, world. Thus far, self, and no more. This is what's going to go down as of today. The two golden rules are at the top of the list. Hallelujah. And you'll be walking by faith in the Son of God. You won't be looking for a tax deduction. Hallelujah. You won't be looking uh, for <coughs> material grandeur 
You'll be through with that well and truly. You'll be one who's content with him, Elohim, with God alone. I know from whence my help comes from, it comes from the Lord. Hey? I know in whom I have believed and do believe. It's Jesus. Infallible is his way. I am the way. Amen? The more excellent way. It's really time to bud up. Hey? I actually believe that we're to call this message budding up. Glory. Hallelujah. Budding up. Letting the fruit bud and blossom in our lives. Hey? The fruits of the Spirit. Whoo! So those who are troubled within are not abiding, are they? In faith, hope and love. That's why we need to do those two commands, that we may abide. The Lord doesn't want us troubled. The Lord doesn't want us with drama. There's only one escape from the drama of this life, and that's death. It's better than the birth, isn't it? Ecclesiastes said, King Solomon, he threw the gauntlet down, didn't he, in Ecclesiastes 1.1. 1, 1. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. That was in verse 1. Then he concluded in the last chapter, about the 13th verse. He said, bud up. He said, keep the covenant. Fear God. Keep his commands. Even he, he started with eyeball and the vanity of the world. He started by telling the people, hey, it's all vanity anyway. Can't you see that? Put your compact away. It's all vanity. Someone say amen. amen. Put, put it away. Put it to bed. Put it to death. Forget it. Be you in Christ. Don't be you. That's terrible. That would be the Edemic you. That's the Edemic you. And that goes for the Rams too. <laughs> ah! Ah! Let's have a look in the writings of Genesis. I'm not just talking about yous here. I'm talking about Rams. Hey? Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman saw, watch those eyes, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make her wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he agreed. And he ate. No. No, 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 no. Let me tell you this. Love is the greatest. Living in obedience to the Victor Emmanuel is greater than any food. Anything you will see with your eyes. Any wisdom that you can have outside of Christ. Living in obedience to the Victor Emmanuel is far greater. The greatest of these is love. 
Was Eve loving God? Was she putting Jesus first? She wasn't budding. She didn't bud up. Hey? And Adam didn't even say but. He just went along, didn't he? He just went along with it. We need to bud up. We need to start bearing that fruit. Eve wasn't bearing the fruit. She was thinking of herself. She was thinking of her. She wasn't even thinking of her husband. She was thinking of her. She was the number one. I never experienced anything in my life to be compared with loving Jesus first and foremost. I have never, ever experienced anything like it. It was like everything had in my life had subsided. It was like a Red Sea experience. It was miraculous. It was powerful. It was awesome. It was unheard of in my life. It was unbelievable, nearly. It was just ah. It was just ah. Because I laid hold of two golden rules that any fool can take away and use. <laughs> and this fool took away the two golden rules and used them. If you're going to use the new covenant to its ultimate best, you're going to do it. And you watch faith, hope, and love will rise in your heart. Will arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. In your heart. I'm just thinking of that scripture in Peter. Which says. Let's go over to Peter. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. By the grace of the Lord, eh? Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter, chapter 1. Verse 13. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope fully upon the power that is to be brought to you at the revelation. Hallelujah. We have to gird up the mind. Hey? We have to gird up the mind, the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully on God's power, on God doing, doing something and doing many things on your faith obedience to the new covenant. Those two golden rules. Living in that expectation realm. Say, Lord, 
these, everything is hanging on this. Everything is in the balance here on this. Everything depends on this, on that new covenant. Are we going to keep it? And nail bonds to golden rules. Am I going to abide in them? Because if I don't, I can't activate the complete walk. I can't activate the power that's going to come to me. I can't get the revelation of the whole thing. I just can't get it. I just won't see that all is vanity. I just won't be able to comprehend. I'll chase my tail for the rest of my life on earth. Someone say amen. amen. I just won't walk in the resurrection power. I just won't be saved from the wrath to come. Or hellfire, eternal hell in there. It's time to butt up. It's time to let the crucifixion begin. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Peter says, sanctify yourself today. Sanctify Christ in you. Give him that preeminent position. Someone say amen. Hey? Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And now, by the faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest. The greatest of these is love. Living, living there, living in that love. The greatest. Living in obedience to the victor Emmanuel. And then his love becomes so tangible. His love becomes so obvious and so real. What kind of love is this? Scarcely would a righteous man die for a righteous man. But the righteous Christ died for sinners. What kind of love is this? Repent or perish. Repent and be forgiven. What kind of love is this? Budding love. It allows us to bud, blossom and bloom, bless others. It allows us to be a blessing in the earth. It allows us to be a pure drink offering poured out. To the people. Fresh water to the thirsty. Bread to the hungry. Peace to the tormented. Joy unspeakable to the sad and broken down. Healing to the sick. Hope to the hopeless. Allows us to be living. Now by the faint hope and love, hallelujah. And the greatest is love because that's where it all started. When Jesus came to the earth, Jesus left his glory, emptied himself of all the It all started with love. God so loved the world. That's where it starts. That's where it all starts. That's why the Lord made the covenant 
a love covenant. And the old covenant is obsolete, fading away, and there's a new covenant. It's not saying to the congregation, oh, if you give so much money, you'll be able to claim it back on your taxes. <laughs> Now it's a matter of saying to the congregation, hey, it's time to bud up. <laughs> Woo! Go! Glory! It's time to start bearing those fruits. Brotherly love. Kindness. Patience. It's time... To see it Jesus way. Lay hold of those two golden rules. And no, you can't get a better. Look, you, the, the taxation department and human beings can't bless you anywhere near what Jesus will bless you if you give, if we give it back, pressed down, shaken together overflowing. The taxation department won't be doing that. They'll be throttling you. They'll be trying to squeeze you like a lemon. But when you give silently, humbly and generously and you give of your, your time and your life and your love and your, your goods and your finance and you give of you and everything connected to you, you say, Jesus, and things are happening, and it's a certain season. It might be the sandy season. It might be birthday season or culture season or tradition season, family season, the family's visiting. And hang on, hang on. Let, let, wait on, wife. Just wait on a minute. We're not going to forget the two golden rules here. Remember, wife, us two fools, we took away these two golden rules. Now we're going to abide in them. Hallelujah. And then everything balances out because everything hangs in the balance on these two. Someone say amen. <laughs> two golden rules. That any fool. <laughs> and he takes the fools, doesn't he? And the weak in the abase, and he gives them the two golden rules. <laughs> that we may use them. And now, abideth faith, hope, and love. Use them. Use them. Use them. Now, abideth faith, hope, and love. Use them. Use these two rules as your priority in life. Someone say amen. Hey? Whoo! So Jesus gave us these two golden rules so we may rejoice exceedingly on earth. And when Jesus is number one and we are abiding by the two golden rules daily, We'll be filled, won't we? We'll be full. The Lord wants our joy to be full. The Lord wants us to be filled with generosity. The Lord wants us to forget about ourselves. The Lord wants us to say, well, hang on a minute. I can go and I can sit in a restaurant or somewhere and just have this to me. No, I know what I'll do. I'll buy by the two going real. <laughs> I'll take this blessing I'll share it with my whole family I'll live by the two golden rules and I tell you what what came out of that was even more revelation and more love I'm budding again blooming again you say hey now we can get more out of this we can do more with this. Hallelujah. 
That's the, the miracle of Jesus the Christ ministry's mission. It's just, a, it's just a miracle mission. It's miracle. Because our mission is the miracle. Yes. Our mission is the Christ. Our mission is the Word and He is the Christ. And the Christ is the Word. That's our mission. Our mission is the Word. Our mission is the Christ. Our mission is the two golden rules. Our, our mission is go and teach as many as you can. Persuade them to lay hold of those two golden rules. That any fool, they don't have to be educated. They don't have to be black or white or yellow. They don't have to be anything. He takes the, the fool's and the abased and the silly, stupid of the world. And he gives them two golden rooms. And they become more wise than the wise. They become more richer than the rich. They appear poor, but make many rich. Why? Because they're walking in the two golden rooms that any fool can take away. In you. Yeah? Budding up. Or we could call it the two golden rules that any fool can take away. And you. We'll just leave that with the Lord. Amen? So the outworking of the cross enabled, made way for the outworking of the two golden rules in our lives. The outworking of of the two golden rules. Unless Jesus laid hold of the two golden rules for us, we could never lay hold of the outworking of the two golden rules. Jesus dying on the cross opened the door for us to then lay hold of the two golden rules by faith because he gave us the grace and the faith. Amen? And then the outworking of the two golden rules, faith, hope and love oozing out of us on application of the two golden rules that any fool can take away in years. Amen. And now abide of faith, hope and love. They live. They abide. They're not books. They're not this. They're not material things. They're, it, faith, hope and love are spiritual. Hey? The New Covenant, the New Testament, the two golden rules are spiritual. When the heart is set straight, everything will be in order. Governed by the Spirit. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. Paul the Apostle said, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.